I got a call from Rishav of Duga Honda earlier today and if you are looking to buy or maybe you are looking for a test drive of any of the Honda motorcycles in and around Kolkata, I'll put up their number on screen and you can give them a call and tell them Ride with Rahul sent you. Last week I was riding a 1300cc Suzuki Hayabusa and this week I find myself with something unique, the 110cc all new scooter motorcycle from Honda the Navi. Now when you're looking at the Navi, the styling is the most unique part. I mean, it has got the chassis of a scooter, the engine placement of a scooter, but the styling of a motorcycle. Now if you've known the Grom and if you've seen the review of the Honda Grom, which is somewhat uh, the inspiration for the Navi, you know where this is coming from. But that, the Honda Grom I mean, or the MSX125 is a motorcycle it is a mini motorcycle whereas this is more of a scooter because this takes the engine and the platform both from the activa but when you're looking at the styling part of it there are certain things which i love for example i really love this part this is right out of the grom styling and it, it has got that honda badging on top of it which is just a sticker job now the handlebar if you're looking at the handlebar it's a very thin and basic handlebar but i really love the connection rod here and then you have a very simple console no fuel gauge no trip meter just an odometer and a speedometer so, and uh, no rpm meter as well so that's like uh, you know right out of the old feel and if you're looking at the uh, handlebar lock it's it's not in the console like it is in most the bikes we ride these days it's right below there on the neck it's it's completely giving you a retro feel as well as i think that is some of the cost cutting which you're seeing on this motorcycle but when you're talking about the looks i mean the the side body panels the long seat which is very comfortable by the way and the overall shape of this motorcycle it kind of makes people notice you this is 39,500 X showroom Delhi and if you're buying a motorcycle in this price range you have a, an, another option from Bajaj which is a regular size full size motorcycle if I may say so it doesn't grab all that attention but yesterday when I walked into a pretty crowded plaza everyone was asking about this bike and that's the USP I mean you're buying this you'd get the attention and if you're if you're looking for that kind of attention then maybe it's a good idea so this is being targeted towards the youngsters and suppose someone's going to college and he doesn't have that much public transportation in his area would be a very nice choice for this because easy to afford and you know it, it would give get him the attention uh, and it, it's kind of like a very young thing i wouldn't want a middle-aged person riding the navi though with its current price i think everybody will be riding it like i said people have a lot of curiosity about this motorcycle and i have to answer them the first thing which even i thought of is whether this is a scooter or a motorcycle now I'm not talking about looks I'm not talking about features I'm just talking about the feel of it and when you're riding a motorcycle what you basically have is the engine on the front area because the engine is on the back this gives the motorcycle a completely different dynamics for example the front brake which is usually strong in the motorcycles in this case it's the rear brake that's working well because the rear has more weight on it both the brakes 
a 130 mm both are drum brakes so the rear brake is working a lot stronger there is a tendency to lock up the rear brake if you go very hard at it but the front brake it doesn't really have all that bite so when you're riding it within the city just using the front brake you can stop at around say 20 25 kilometers per hour if you're throttling around that but if you're on a higher speed you'd need to use both the brakes otherwise it's just not stopping and the rear brake is playing a good amount of uh, progressive braking to stop this motorcycle initially it scared me because the scooter was stopping instantly but when i got used to it i really like how much braking power i had and if i was in a panic braking situation i could stop this thing in a really really small amount of time now one bad thing i did find uh, we were doing a lot of open road and it was not the highway but the suburban area, area where which were testing the bike it had a lot of open roads and the wind the wind turbulence really unsettled the bike which is okay because we were doing speeds of over 60 kilometers per hour not higher than that but even there we could feel something something moving around now one thing could be that because this part is hollow some wind may be getting into it the crosswinds and maybe unsettling the bike a little bit more by creating an up thirst that could be a point uh, but i'm not really sure uh, one other point would be it's lightweight but that was really unsettling to us in the beginning we got adjusted to it but on on high crosswinds this may be a little bit of a problem cornering and feel now a lot of people you've seen youngsters corner very well with the scooties uh, because of the lack of the weight on the front end i was feeling that there was some sort of like the front end feedback was missing which was uh, a bad thing for me because the tires were keeping up very nicely mrf has provided nice tubeless tires for this motorcycle or scooter whatever you want to call it i'd call it rather a scooter but the tires are gripping very well so initially i had a problem leaning it into the corner and the bike tips into the corner pretty easily actually it tips into the corner so fast that if you peg way or put your left foot pressure on the peg to get the bike into the corner it goes in too fast so you have to really apply a little bit amount of pressure and that is enough for tipping the bike into corners mid corner stability is not there i didn't fi feel that much but once you get used to it you can really relax the bike into the corner coax it into the corner and it does pretty well low speed flickability on this thing reminds me of a bicycle which means it's utterly flickable and even a 12 year old boy can probably ride this thing with ease and if you're talking about the turning radius it's got the shortest turning radius you can imagine city riding within traffic was absolute breeze because in your left hand is absolutely sitting idle it's the rear brake you don't have to use any clutch your left feet your right feet everything sitting idle i was kind of getting my feet kind of cramped because they were completely stationary i'm not used to that i'm not i'm used to moving them around quite a while so but it's very comfortable one, once i got used to it ergonomics wise uh one thing was that i initially did not like the position of the foot pegs which i was expecting a little bit towards the back because that's what we feel on the motorcycles on this one you know it's way front but once you get used to it again if you're used to a scooter it will be easy for you to ride this if you're used to a motorcycle it will take a little bit of adaptation the power delivery is just a little bit slowed up so you don't get the instant throttle acceleration don't expect that from 100 cc 8 bhp thing basically 110 cc but i i'd say it's pretty zippy and even with the pillion it was having enough uh, go to get the job done didn't find many bad roads where we were testing so we just went off road to test out the suspension the front telescopic suspension is on the hardest side whereas the rear spring loaded hydraulic is on the softer side i would say it does pretty well on off road conditions but in case of bumps the suspension does have a tendency to bottom out for the purpose it is serving i would say it's fine one thing is that i've never felt very comfortable with scooters and the reason is the scooter's wheels are too small i was expecting bigger wheels on the navi and honda does deliver with 12 inches wheels compared to the 10 inches wheel on the activa 
So that's one of the differences. Now the engine, the power output, the torque and the chassis all are same with the Active. It's the same engine and the same platform. The styling is different but it does get some other changes as well. It's 7 kg lighter than the Activa so the acceleration should be a bit more eager. The tires are also a little different. The front is a size smaller whereas the rear maintains the same size with the Activa. It, it is not a complete motorcycle handling feel but it tries to do as much as it can for example the front gets a telescopic uh, suspension whereas on the activa it's a spring-loaded hydraulic suspension and the rear on both the scooters or motorcycles whatever you want to call them is the same spring-loaded hydraulic another thing i like is it's a, it's a mono suspension it's asymmetric which is a nice touch i mean i really like the styling part of that i think it would de deliver a little bit more mileage than the activa and we know that the activa is about 60 kilometers per liter so i'm expecting at least uh, 65 maybe on this 63 to 65 kilometers per liter i haven't tested it because it doesn't come with a fuel gauge which is one of the biggest negatives actually and if you're talking about the fuel tank capacity this is having somewhere around 3.8 to 4 liters of fuel tank capacity whereas the active has a 5 liter fuel tank capacity so that way i think uh, that is a little more practical the activa but i would like to tell you one thing that it does come with a retro reserve switch so it's not like you'll be running out of fuel because whenever you run out of fuel you still have you can turn it to reserve and you'll know that you have hit the reserve so even if you cannot see the fuel gauge you will know when you when you are about to run out of fuel so that's a welcome touch another big point would be that the upgradability you can customize this honda has promised more versions in future and you would be able to change parts colors and everything on this bike which is a welcome touch actually the activa doesn't have that and if you're going for luggage space now that's one of the things why people buy scooters we generally get a good amount of luggage space i've seen people the activa has a very uh, sort of a flown up belly where you can store even a full-faced helmet some people do that but on the navi you do have some space below this i mean under the seat but it's almost as the same as a motorcycle which is to say it doesn't contain much but you do have this nice storage space here we tried placing a full-faced helmet in there it didn't go in you can place in a backpack other small items that would go in and you do have the option to buy a box a separate accessory and put it there so you can lock in something securely so that's an additional accessory i'm not sure about the price because it's not available in the showroom right now but you do have some storage space so if you're talking about storage space practicality i'd say this is more practical than a motorcycle but less than a scooter and it is 100 percent fun if you are really looking forward to buying a honda navi i would ask you to really go ahead and at least take a test drive because duga honda has been really helpful they gave me the motorcycle last night and i got it for a full day of road test i've ridden it over all the conditions so their contact details are live on your screen give them a call take a test drive i'm sure you'll love this motorcycle and well that's it for for us from now and a lot of more reviews are coming so if you haven't hit that subscribe button why not go ahead and hit that subscribe button now and stay tuned for our next videos thanks for watching this is rahul see you very very soon goodbye so she's very interested and she's just 20 so, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one.